Well, I guess we'll start from the beginning. Um, when I was five years old, I came down with polio. This was before the vaccine came out. So my entire left arm and leg was completely paralyzed. I went for therapy every day for three years and by some miracle, and the doctors have no explanation for it, I overcame the polio and uh, my exercise was just doing this because I couldn't do anything. And because of the polio, I drove my parents crazy. So my father started teaching me how to draw a glass two ovals connected by two straight lines, just to keep me out of my mother's hair. And I became addicted to drawing. And my first exhibition was at five years old of 50 drawings of glasses on my parents' refrigerator. That was my first exhibition. I think they bought every single one of them, so it was a sellout. Um, and then I went to art school, Philadelphia College of Arts, School of Visual Arts. Got out of college and became creative director of Paramount Records at 21 years old. That first year I was nominated for a Grammy Award for Best Album Cover. Opened up my own company in New York and California. And this was right at the prime time when album covers became an art form. We were doing about 30 album covers a week, and this was 1970. Then I created the Mouth and Tongue for the Rolling Stones, and that really put me on the map. I went to England, opened up a studio there. And when album covers ceased to exist, and it became CDs, that's when I stopped doing album covers and started painting. And of course, being in the music business my whole life, I started painting rock stars and was getting commissioned by all these rock stars and people wanted me to paint certain groups for them or recording artists, so it became a whole venue for me. Um, I've been with the Bill Wyland Gallery now for a few years and constantly working on either commission rock star paintings or folks have been buying what I created right off the walls. Well, about five years ago, I started feeling a numbness in my pinky and ring finger and went to a doctor and I came down with this condition where my nerve from painting all these years and drawing, my nerve was completely damaged, my main nerve. So we had surgery and moved the nerve from the back of my elbow to the front of my elbow. And that really didn't help. So now what's happened is over here, I've lost the complete muscle between my finger and my thumb and it's gotten worse and worse and worse. So I'm figuring I have maybe a year of being able to hold a paintbrush. On my way into the gallery on a Friday night, I said, okay, if I have one year left of painting, I have to do an amazing painting. So I came up with the idea of doing The Last Supper of all the incredible dead rock stars. But I just didn't want to do a regular painting. I decided I'm going to do a five foot by 12 foot painting. If I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out with a blaze. It's going to take me about a year to do. There's, it's a triptych, so there are three separate canvases. And it's going to take about four months to paint each canvas. So by the end of it, it'll be a year and uh, it will be my last huge painting. And if I could still paint after that, I will, but I don't know.
No left hand and soon to be no right hand. But take it one day at a time. In the Last Supper painting, I believe I have close to 50 rock icons. Starting from Amy Winehouse, Jerry Garcia, Joe Kaka, Tom Petty, John Bonham, the Allman Brothers, Karen Carpenter. And what I've done was, there's a number four next to my signature, which means there are four hidden mouth and tongues in the painting. And until the painting is finished, we photograph the pencil sketch. We're coming out with a limited edition signed in number prints of the pencil sketch until the painting is finished. So if you're interested, we have that available through the Wyland Gallery. Search for the mouth and tongues because I'm not going to tell you where they are. <laughs>